Tag Booktube and welcome to a new video. This is a tag video for Tag Tuesday. This is called the Content Creator Tag. I wasn't tagged but I saw this on Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading's channel and uh, I shall leave the link to that. It was originated by uh, the Horrific Podcast. I must admit it's a, a channel I, I haven't heard of before so uh, I shall leave the link to their or origin video. Um, so, question one. What made you decide to become a content creator? Well, in all honesty, I never did decide to become a content creator. So, by that I mean uh, in booktube terms. I was making videos talking about books more thematically rather than individual books. So, maybe an author theme or themes like child narrators in fiction or uh, war narration in fiction. Uh, and I was making them before I'd even heard of booktube. Um, I'm not quite sure what the impulse was, why I suddenly decided, because they weren't books I was necessarily reading then and there. I might have read them in the sort of over the course of the previous two years, but something made me want to put my thoughts down about these books. And then I discovered there was this thing called BookTube. So one of the things I hurriedly did was tag them all <laughs> as BookTube videos. Um, but it wasn't a conscious decision, and you know. I, like Kelly, I didn't really know what the rules of, book, of BookTube were, so I never made a newbie channel, which uh, is very useful for introducing yourself to the community. Uh, I just carried on doing what I was doing, although I suppose less thematic and more around specific books that I just read. Um, I'd kind of run out of <laughs> some of the things I wanted to talk about thematically. Um, so that's the first thing to say that it was never a conscious decision to become a content maker a content creator although I was creating a little bit of content but not in an organized fashion and the second thing is uh, with my other hat on as a, as a writer of novels uh, I cannot stand the term content creator because it you know I regard what I do as art no, I don't mean my booktube stuff but you know the, the novels I put out I regard them as literature and art and to me content creator sort of the antithesis of that somehow um, that you are creating content for the sake of content as as airspace uh, I don't mean as as a sort of air fill um, but I cannot deny that having a booktube channel makes me a content creator I just I just bristle at the term and I can't in my own mind I can't sort of balance the two up and I mean I, I think I am both but I find it hard to recognise that I'm both. And I, pr I produce plenty of content around my books in terms of explainer videos and origin videos and social media sort of graphics and stuff. So, you know, I do create content. But to me, the book itself, the novel itself is the thing and all this other stuff is just marketing. I think that's another aspect of why I, I distinguish the two. But I cannot just deny that, you know, I create content. I just also happen to create literature. So... I struggle with that mightily, I'm afraid. Uh, two, what has been your biggest accomplishment to date? Well, I find this hard because I don't... Other, I mean, I do look at how many views my current video has got and I do uh, look at the comments and answer the comments. But I'm not someone who's obsessed with numbers. I never look at my metrics. I never put out an appeal for people to subscribe. And I think this is very much like my own writing in that, um, yes, I have to put my book out. Once my book's out there, I have to put myself out there to sort of try and amplify its existence. But I don't go chasing and begging attention for it. Um, and I think it's the same with my BookTube channel. You know, outside of BookTube, on other types of videos, everyone always goes, you know, if you like this button, please give it a thumbs up. Please give it, you know, please subscribe for you know notifications of future videos and that a lot of them will offer merch a lot of them accept advertising through uh, YouTube and that could, that stuff all kind of rankles me but because I want the content I still watch them but you know I've never asked anyone to hit the like button on mine I just figure people don't need to be spoon fed you know everyone knows how YouTube works if they want to hit like or dislike for that matter they'll do that and I don't even need to sort of crave their indulgence and I, I felt this about my my books as well you know I I think that if someone has engaged with your book so much that they've not only read it 
but they then go on to leave a comment either on Goodreads or on Twitter or, or whatever it means. I mean, that's above and beyond the call of duty. That's above and beyond what any author could expect. I mean, you can't expect a, a reader necessarily to finish your book. They might not like it. You can't expect uh, the average reader, by which I mean, you know, this reader rather than that reader who walks into a bookshop to pick up your book and buy it. You know, I just leave that to the, you know, the fates of, of readers and, and, and bookshops and, and Amazon and all of that. It, it will be what it will be. Um, I just put the work out there. And if people pick it up under their own cognizance rather than pressure from me or other people, that's great. And if they don't, they don't. Um, and that sort of fell over into my booktube channel i'm going to make the video i was making the videos before booktube anyway because i wanted to talk about the books and i will continue making those videos this time through booktube whether it's getting hosts of people watching them or not you know i've no idea if people watch my videos all the way through to the end i think there may even be some way of telling that through your metrics but you know i'm not going to put any pressure on on, on my viewers and I'm not going to put any pressure on myself according to what my viewers do. You could argue that it would be useful to look at your metrics, which videos work better than others. Um, but I just, it, it doesn't, it just doesn't sort of compute with me as, as being terribly significant. It's all about the, you know, what is on the video and what books you're talking about, what you're saying about the books. Um, and that's all that matters to me, really. You know, however many people um, tune into that is, as I say, an added bonus. Whenever someone buys one of my books and reads it, that is in itself a, a huge bonus. If they then want to comment further on that uh, or reach out to me and, and want to discuss it, that's, as I say, above and beyond the call of duty, for which I'm, you know, supremely humbled and grateful for. But I don't expect it. And the same for Booktube. Um... Three, do you struggle with social media? I don't really understand this question. The only social media I'm on is on Twitter, which I do not struggle with. Um, Goodreads, uh, I suppose you could struggle in the community groups, but I, I don't really participate much in them anymore. Don't have the time. And LinkedIn occasionally I use, just as the, the professional writer. Um, I have a blog, but although it grew to a reasonable size, I... I haven't got the content for it anymore, really. Most of what was on my blog was either comments about politics or blog pieces about politics, which I ceased after the last general election in Britain in 2019, for obvious reasons. And um, and I posted a lot of flash fiction, uh, fresh, fresh stories, uh, original stories, but I'm not really writing that many these days. So occasionally I still post my blog. So I, I don't, I don't, I'm not struggling. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the question is trying to get at. But I, equally, I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on Facebook. So, you know, I'm fairly limited in, in the platforms I, I use. So generating con content for fewer platforms must be easier than generating content for more platforms, I guess. Maybe that's what the question is getting at, is, is do you struggle to churn out enough content for different platforms? And as I say, I, I you know, I... I am restricted enough uh, that that's not such an onerous burden. Four, which content creator inspires you the most? I don't know about inspire, but the most creative booktuber for me is Sean the Book Maniac, uh, because he's come up with wonderful uh, videos such as the page 112 tag, the parasite booktuber tag that no one else was doing. Uh, and they all, you know, stand absolutely on their feet and, and, and catch on how other people take them on. And I, I think, you know, you have to kudos to Sean for coming up with these successful different types of content. Um, but I, I don't know about Inspire. Um, yeah, equally, I don't think my, my videos would inspire anyone, but there you go. Uh, five, what frustrates you the most about other content creators? Uh, again, I don't really understand this. Uh, as I say, I've already talked about uh, non-booktube stuff. Uh, but in terms of booktube, nothing really. I mean, I'm not a great fan of vlog videos, which are 20 minutes of someone sitting in an armchair reading and then stroking a cat. Um, but, you know, people are entitled to 
and make what videos they want and put them out and, and the viewers are entitled to make their choices as to whether they're going to tune in or not so um, I don't get frustrated by poor production values I suppose I get frustrated when I can't quite uh, catch what the, uh, the person is saying on the video uh, but that's not consistently any one person um, so yeah I, I don't really have an answer for this Four, a six what frustrates you the most about your own content um, I think what frustrates me is I don't I don't script any of my videos and I normally I'm responding very quickly to a book that I've just put down I finished and, and put down I want to get my thoughts while they're still fresh it's not always possible to do that because you, you tend to be making a video that's grouping two or three books together that you've read in a period of a week or whatever and there are the, the most frustrating thing for me is when while I was reading a book, I thought of something. I say, yeah, I want to highlight that in my video, and then I forget. And I've even done things like dog ear books on pages that I want to read to camera as part of my review, and I, I forget to do that. So I think my thing is is forgetting things that I wanted to say, and that's because I don't script it. So I can't have it both ways because I'm not, you know, I'm not a, a I'm a seat of the pants writer, and I think I'm a seat of the pants a, a booktuber as well. Um, so given that I am going to neglect to say stuff because I haven't really organised the running order of what I want to say on any one book in my head and that's when things fall through the cracks and I just have to accept that. Um, seven, how do you motivate yourself to keep going? Well, the books motivate you, you know, even if you've read a bad book, the next one you pick up can be great and, and fill you and enthuse you to want to talk about it straight away. So... Um, I find it easy in that respect. I've, I, you know, I don't go to town particularly on the production value, so I can turn videos around very quickly. So we are now 5.33 in London on Tuesday. I saw Kelly's video probably at 4. So I had to, I had to have a Zoom call at work. Uh, no, so I saw Kelly's video probably at half 3. That's right. I had a Zoom call team meeting at, at work from 4 till nearly 10 to 5. So I obviously couldn't do anything in response to, to Kelly's video then. So I've from 5 o'clock till 5.30, bang, that's it. This video's done. So, um, yeah, I turn videos around very quickly. I particularly like when I'm tagged specifically, and I wasn't tagged on this one, see if I can do it the same day. Um, the only thing that slows that up is if I need books from my shed outside and the weather's cold or wet. Um, but I, I I don't know. I just find it very satisfying to be able to, to, to respond that quickly. Um, so there you have it. That was the content creator tag. Thanks to Kelly for inspiring me to do this. And thanks to the horrific podcast for creating it. Till next time.